Strix Nebulosa, the Phantom of the North, the Ghost Owl. He looks so stern and formal, but look closely, he's wearing a bow tie. Hi, I'm Amy, and welcome to my channel where we talk about wildlife conservation, organic gardening, and nature education. Today we are talking about the Great Gray Owl. Their genus name is Strix the ancient Roman word for owl. In their mythology, the Strix was a bird of ill omen that sometimes fed on human flesh and blood. It was linked to witches and magical beings. The species name, Nebulosa, comes from the Latin word meaning foggy or obscure. So to sum it up, the great gray owl is magical and mysterious. In terms of length, the great gray owl is the world's longest owl with females averaging 28 inches. However, they are outweighed by several other owls. Their size is deceptive since they are mostly fluff. Their fluffy feathers, large head, and long tail hide a relatively small body. Look at the picture on the right to see the extent of the body plumage. They are well adapted to live in their cold northern climates where they hunt for rodents under the snow. The great gray owl can hear a vole traveling two feet below the top of the snow. Voles, gophers, moles, and lemmings make up the majority of their diet. They have large talons to grasp their prey. They swoop down silently, feet first. Their legs and feet are covered with feathers to keep them warm. You can see the relatively small body size here as compared to those wings. They have the largest facial disc of any owl. Their face acts like a satellite receiver and gives them that great hearing. In winter, they may migrate to lower elevations where the snow is not quite as deep. Great grays typically hunt at dawn and dusk, but daytime hunting is not unusual. They hunt when their prey is active. Wingspan averages 4 feet 8 inches for females. Great gray owls do not build a nest. Instead, they use the tops of toppled or old trees, ledges, or old raptor nests. They seldom add anything to the nest. Cornell Bird Lab does have plans on building a nest site or platform for great grays, which I will link below. Typically, four eggs are laid between March and May. Incubation takes 30 days. Owlets start leaving the nest at four weeks and then taking exploratory practice flights at six weeks. If they fall to the ground, the young will use their long talons to climb back up the tree to the nest. Fledglings will stay near the nest area for many months. Typically, the female starts to retreat once they start flying, but males have been observed feeding young into the fall. Timber harvesting is destroying habitats and nesting sites. In addition, it reduces prey populations. Livestock grazing in meadows can reduce prey populations and owl food sources. And pesticides used in agriculture lower rodent populations, as well as the infected rodents carry chemicals in their bodies that can harm the owls that feed on them. Great gray owls are considered endangered in the Yosemite region of California, where a small subpopulation lives. In most areas of their range, they are defined as a species of least concern. This beautiful and majestic bird needs to be concerned, conserved, for future generations, not to mention the beauty and ecological benefits they provide us with today. Thanks for watching. 
You can check out my videos on the great horned owl or snowy owl next. Have a wonderful wild day.